Hello everybody, welcome back to Reaper Minis TV. We're going to start off this episode looking at some more large blisters and then get back to regular reviews. From the Pathfinder line we have the second Hook Mountain Ogre. And when we get in here... We've got 40 millimeter base, the body of the ogre, which is just about every part of him, and then a sprue. This hook part was on here. You've got the head and the hook that's on the end of his staff. So the hook is going to go into place after you clean off the little bits of flash here and there. Hook's going to go into place pretty much like that. Or like that, I suppose, either way. And the head. You've got some cleaning to do around the hair and the chin. And this has got a ball and socket joint. Fits right into place there. And he's off looking over to the side. So very large ogre figure. Suitable for D&D, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, any other games. Nice detail on the model. Good musculature without being overly cartoony. It's not like he's all roided up, but he's very muscular. He's got a loincloth on and then some fur, almost shorts, maybe underpants, and then some stitched together chaps maybe here. Don't think he's riding a horse though. No shoes, but all in all, good ogre figure. Some extra detail with some skulls as trophies here on the side. Uh, looks like he'll paint up easily. Not a whole lot of cleaning necessary. Uh, very quick to be on your gaming table. Next up is a stone giant, and he is also out of the P65 line. And when we look inside, You'll see we've got a 40 millimeter square base, the giant without his two arms, and then his two arms. First, his right arm carries a large club, lots of etching in the side going all the way around the, the shaft of the club itself. And then his left arm, pretty much just an arm and a hand with a little bracelet on it. A little bit of cleaning needed, some mold lines, but to be expected on a figure this large. Now the giant himself, he's got a loincloth on, hammer on the back. The hammer he's got here is easily a two-handed hammer for any dwarf or man. A couple of large bags, another mold line going across the top of his head but that shouldn't be hard at all to smooth down and get cleaned up. Two arms fit in into place like that. You can see they have a peg and void joint for each arm to go in, like that. Or on this side, this side maybe needs a little bit of work get rid of that gap by clipping down the peg a little bit and then just working it into place. And I've already had this miniature for a little while and here's my painted version of him. I put mine on a 50 millimeter base but no reason you wouldn't use the 40 millimeter base if you were playing D&D or something like that. Okay, and now back to some regular reviews. Starting off with a couple of chronoscope figures. This first one is Torch Hughes. It's another one of the intergalactic marines, and I just love this figure. I love all of the intergalactic marines, even though there's only three of them now. But he is done in the same style as the other two guys, Reggie Van Zant and Nick Stone that you can also see here. And all three of them are in a similar style, but with a little bit of difference here and there. But what's constant on all of them are the breastplate and the icon that's on the front of the breastplate. Mr. Hughes is a single-piece miniature that's carrying a flamethrower, and he also has a couple of 
tanks of the fuel that are on his back. Very little in the way of cleaning necessary. Mold line was very faint. It was a very crisp casting. Almost no cleanup needed at all. He's wearing goggles, and also his armor is a little less bulky or plated than the other two guys, but it's more like a fire suit. It's got big padding on it, more like you'd see on a fireman, which goes with him carrying a flamethrower and being worried about getting all that gel or whatever combustible liquid he's got all over him. Considering how much I've gushed over the figure already, you can tell that I love it. The only thing I would ask right now is to get a couple of regular troopers with assault rifles or some kind of gun like that to bulk out a squad using these guys as the basis maybe of a group of space marines. Or even if there were enough of these eventually released by Reaper, you could do a whole space marine army based around these guys for 40k and I think it would look awesome. So uh, bring more on. Love these guys a lot. Nothing wrong with them whatsoever. Next up is Dr. Dread, and he's billed as being a supervillain. If you sort of get a Dr. Doom feeling out of this guy, so did I. I think that's what's expected. It's not obviously not a copy of Dr. Doom, but I think it's close enough to where anybody could use him as Dr. Doom and it would fit right in. Uh, my first thought was maybe he needs a cape or something like that. I think he looks fine as is, but would look better with a cape and maybe that just makes him too close to Dr. Doom but if you wanted to make a cape you could do it out of green stuff pretty easily. He's also a single piece miniature and there were a few visible mold lines that needed to be cleaned up on the inside and outside of his legs primarily that are going around the perimeter of the model. In addition to using him in a superhero game like the new edition of Mutants and Masterminds that's coming out soon I think you could use him in any kind of sci-fi game. You could probably also drop him into a German army for a Weird War 2 kind of game like Secrets of the Third Reich. Uh, all around good model, and considering he's basically a metal android body or metallic body and the little sash that you can see that covers his front and back, uh, looks like that he'd paint up quickly and easily. Okay, moving on to the Dark Heaven Legends line, we start off with Tawny Firehair, and she is a cat girl, which is pretty obvious by looking at her. It's a single piece miniature of a female feline humanoid that has a set of claws on her right hand and a staff that she's holding in her left hand. She looks like she's wearing a bathing suit or bikini that you might see on Baywatch, and if it wasn't for her tail and the obvious feline features of her face and the pointy ears coming out, and along with her clawed feet, uh, she could pass as a normal human female, maybe a savage warrior, barbarian, uh, something along those lines. But she's quite obviously not just a regular human, so you'd have to have a pretty specific use or need for this miniature. But if you need a female, savage, warrior-esque cat girl, you got her right here. This next blister is listed as being an orc family from what might or might not, I don't know for sure, be a new kind of subline in the Dark Heaven Legends line of figures. It's called Dungeon Tribes, and you get three figures in this blister. All of them are single-piece miniatures, so no assembly required. You get two orc kids and then an orc mom, and she's carrying a baby, so... Not really four figures, but maybe not really three either. Now, from the kids, you get one that's holding a slingshot, and he's holding it off to the side, sort of gangsta style, and I don't know how well that's going to work for him. He's also wearing uh, loincloth and boots. Now, the other orc kid, his brother presumably, has his fingers in his mouth, and he's sticking his tongue out, making a face at either his brother or or maybe the baby that's sitting up in the mama's arms. He's wearing overalls and no shoes, doesn't have any weapons or anything like that, which is not unusual for a little kid, even if it's a goblin. Now, for the mom, she's wearing a skirt and a top that barely covers much of her flesh at all. In fact, she has this huge belly that's sticking out, and some of her boobs are sticking out to the point where you're just like, she is totally white trash. Well, I guess green trash, it's an orc. But she's got a little baby wrapped up in a papoose in her left hand, and it looks like he's got a pacifier in his mouth or he's sticking his tongue out. I think it looks more like a pacifier, uh, but either way, nice little addition there. And you can see that the mom is pointing at the kids, probably yelling at them to mind her. And while this obviously isn't a combat-oriented type of blister, I think it would be wonderful as an addition to an orc and goblin army in Warhammer Fantasy Battle. If you were going to do something like work up a baggage train or a little orc village to sit in your deployment zone, I think a couple of these miniatures and maybe some other non-combat sorts of orcs and goblins would just make a wonderful addition to an army and make it really stand out as unique. Alright, thanks for watching this episode of Reaper Minis TV. We'll see you all soon.